Hey guys, and welcome to a new video. So yesterday I was playing around with some melee builds, and since the Eternity Shroud is basically the most overpowered thing in existence in terms of spells, I want to see like, hey, wait a second. If we're taking a melee uh, skill and convert everything into elemental damage and play the same style as Winter Orb, like Pyring, Call to Fire and, some, and stuff like that, um, I wanted to see how good is it in terms of melee, right? So I... I like crafted this gear yesterday, or at least like put this one together. Uh, it's basically just multi-modded double claws. Um, a jeweled foil would be better, but this one gives me more survivability because the uh, life gained on hit, because I have like a shitload of attack speed, right? So every time I hit with this one, it's like 100 life per hit or something. Uh, then just a, a lion pelt shaped with blood rage, uh, increased attack speed because I didn't have access to any shaped uh, frost blades damage, so that is missing as well. Uh, then Fizz is extra cold, Fizz is extra lightning, then the usual Eternity Shroud, and yeah, some other stuff here. The Hat Hunter is basically only, I know that people say like, hey, wait a sec, you have a Hat Hunter, yeah, GG, you know. Uh, thing is, if I don't wear this belt, all of my gear is red, because I have no, uh, I cannot meet the um, stat requirements, right? And since Hat Hunter gives a lot of strength and dexterity, I'm actually using this one uh, as a stat placeholder so I can equip my gear, right? Other than that, I'm just using like uh, Hatred, then we have Herald of Ice and P uh, Herald of Purity, so we're gonna scale the physical damage. Since Frostblade itself has 60% physical convert to cold damage, uh, we're gonna scale a shitload of co uh, physical damage, and this will get converted to cold, and then cold to fire, and so on. So, for a small showcase, we're just gonna run a Minotaur map here, because Minotaur has respectable life. We're gonna see uh, how the playstyle looks like. In general, it's it's a pretty uh, regular um, playstyle in terms of frost plates, right? So you're just gonna dash around and yeah, frost plates is actually known for quite some good uh, clear speed, um, but the, the single target is bad on frost plates, right? There's a lot of good clear speed builds that actually uh, lack a lot of uh, yeah single target and yeah. I think with this item, it's easy solved. Um, I don't want to spoil or something. We're going to take a look at the path of building later on, how much damage I'm actually doing here. So let's just flash around over here. I mean, obviously, people are going to say like, hey, wait a second, is that a Matil's build? Because like 4k life and stuff. Uh, yeah, the only thing I hope is that Minotaur will not one-shot me with his big slam, right? So it's going to be a race. Either I one-shot him, basically, or he will kill me before... Uh, I'm gonna see if it works out or not. So, um, it's actually a fun build, right? So, can we just... Shit, I have four headhunter buffs. Yeah. Three million, yeah, that's too much. Fuck. We're just gonna... Wait a second. If we are basically unequipping headhunter, equip this on. So we're not gonna, gonna, not gonna take, like, some headhunter buffs into the fight. This is like completely without uh, buffs, so I just need to wait until I have enough mana to reserve my stuff again. Because as I said, this is basically my, my stat belt, right? Oh, god damn it! Hey, wait, what if I just go back to town? That would make it a lot easier, right? Easy clap. So, here we have our Wither Totem, because we're scaling Chaos damage with that one. And now either I die or he dies. Something like that will happen. So, Totems... Okay, it was not the best thing here, the, the best damage showcase, and he did not actually one-shot me, probably because of the Ghost Shrouds. Um, so, if you have buffs on, at least like while in fight and stuff, uh, if a lot of your stuff procs, then you're gonna have a lot more damage, but this was a, something about 4 million or something, I assume. Can't really say how fast this now was or not, but usually in fighting scenarios when you have a lot of other buffs and procs, uh, you're gonna do a lot more damage as well. Especially when you have like your purities up, your sentinels, uh, a lot of stacks of your wither totem and so on. But in theory, right, in theory this build has about 6.7 million shaper DPS if you have everything on, right? Like your flasks and... Power charges, frenzy charges, which I did not have in this fight now because I was um, just waiting for the headhunter buffs to disappear. So that will actually give me another like almost 2 million shaper DPS just coming from power and frenzy charges. Uh, then we have um, Fortify, 
doesn't bring any damage here, but we have Flask if it consecrated ground because of the, um, what's it called? The Bottled Faith, right? So it gives a lot of base crit. And yeah, this is it. 6.7 million Shaper DPS as an Eternity Shroud. Uh, how's it called? Frostblades character. There you go. So I don't want to really talk too much about the gear, to be honest. I'm just going to mention the key facts and I'm going to leave you the path of building in the description below so you can take a look uh, if you're interested in. Because, um, like... Since I got the shaped hat hunter, the problem is that I'm only playing Eternity Shot build since then. And I'm gonna admit, it's just stupid. Whatever build you're gonna play with Eternity Shroud, now proof melee is same stupid as Caster. Caster is even more stupid, but you can make it work the same way, right? So what this means is we have Frost Blades. Uh, we're gonna scale a shitload of physical damage and alley damage. And then we're gonna convert, right? So frost blades itself is 60% conversion. So let's let me write this down real quick. So we have 60% um, fist to cold uh, from frost blades, right? Then we have on the skill tree itself on the bottom right side here on the uh, that ranger starting area we have the winter spirit, right? So winter spirit gives 20% fist to cold conversion and weapon to cold as well uh, 20%. So basically both together is 40%, right? So with that one, uh, let's say tree plus 40% fist to cold, we have now 100% fist to cold conversion. That means that if we mouse over in hideout here, I have 1.3 million frost blades DPS in hideout, you know, so standing around here. That's not, uh, actually insane. But you see there is no physical damage anymore. We have lightning, we have fire, we have cold damage, and we have chaos damage, obviously. So what this means, now um, we're gonna get the eternity shroud buff, right? So let's say Eternity Shroud Chaos Damage. Because we have now Cold Damage, right? So what this means, like, let's write it here. Cold Damage. This is our, this is our starting point, right? So we're gonna apply this one over here. So here we get the first portion of big damage from Eternity Shroud. What we do next is we're gonna take the physical, uh, the Cold to Fire support and the Pyre Ring. That means that here 50% of our cold damage is converted to fire and here 40% of our cold damage is converted to fire. That means that 90% of our cold damage is converted to fire damage. And from this 90% we get another Eternity Shroud proc, right? So that's why you're basically double dipping this because you have your fist converted to cold, the cold to... Uh, you're called to fire, basically, right? And if you take a look at the Aetherius Promise, we have Fizz's Extra Chaos, what we are doing, because we are a Fizz-based build. So this happens before the, uh, all the conversion happens, right? So we get a big portion of Fizz's Extra Chaos once we have the Flask active. And once the conversion go is going on, we get Elias Extra Chaos as well, same as the Shroud, right? So you're gonna get a shitload of DPS. The rest of the gear is just like Fizz's Extra Cold, uh, Fizz's Extra Lightning. Lightning is not really mandatory. Cold is the, is the big thing. Because if we're going to take a look at the Wikipedia, wait a second, um, conversion PUE, so you can take a look how this is actually working. At least I'm just going to copy this one from the wiki here. So that means, I'm gonna pull this one off here. So this is the conversion, right? You can, you can, um, uh, you can convert physical into lightning, uh, lightning into cold, cold into fire and fire into chaos. That's why it's actually bad if you do like physical to fire because then you only get one time the damage of the eternity shot because you cannot go back, right? So there are items where you can have um, like physical to lightning is a, is a, yeah, I think I have one over here basically. Um, this physical to lightning, here is 50% of physical converting to lightning. Yes, I know that we are having here physical convert to cold damage, so we are skipping lightning completely, right? So the best way to do this would probably be physical into lightning, into cold, into fire to have like uh, three times uh, the DPS of the Eternity Shroud, right? But the problem is you need to have a high base damage. So that's why you only convert uh, twice basically, or at least like one time in a big uh, showcase here, right? So you're gonna do this one time because um, for example, because I have played this one before on another build here. I have two Call of the Brotherhoods. They are the same as the Pyre Ring, just the Pyre Ring will do Cold into Fire and the Call of the Brotherhoods will do uh, Lightning into Cold. So instead of Cold into Fire, we are moving from Lightning into Cold. So what I did is uh, playing uh, Blade Vortex. I have, my, my gear is somewhere around. So I was playing with this weapon. You know that the typical alias extra chaos for Winter Orb. 
Um, and then I, I have the second step, physical damage is extra from a random element, right? So what I did with this weapon was taking physical spells. That means um, Divine Ire, for example, is a physical spell. Same as Blade Vortex, same as uh, Stormburst, I think. Uh, some of these spells do actually have a built-in physical to lightning. So if we're going to move here Divine Ire, let me check this one real quick. Uh, this spell is new uh, in this league, right? It's a physical spell, means it is a, uh, it deals physical damage, right? But here it says 50% of physical damage convert into lightning damage. So if I take Divine Ire and just suck it in the physical into cold, we have another 50% conversion. Uh, then you have already 100% uh, lightning damage, but, uh, so we are here. And then you convert this one with uh, double call of the Brotherhood into cold damage, right? You could go cold to fire support over here, um, because pe like people would uh, now assume, wait a second, if I take a call of the Brotherhood and the Pyre Ring, I'm converting from lightning into cold into fire, blah, 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 you know. Uh, but if you're only having a, a, show, um, a low amount of damage and you convert that one, you're not going to have a lot of damage, right? So you're going to have way more DPS if you're just going to go either from lightning into cold or cold into fire. The only exception is the fist to uh, the cold to fire support, because if you run double call of the Brotherhood, you can definitely take um, the... Cold to fire support, right? Because here we have another cold as extra fire. Since we're converting the majority of our damage, our lightning damage into cold, uh, we can have a shitload of DPS more on this one, right? So this is just from theory and it works out pretty well. I saw people doing zero, uh, like 100 to zero shaper kills in the matter of one single divine iron cast, right? So whatever you think about this eternity shroud, even for melee, it's just completely stupid, is way out of hand. I know it's expensive, I know Shaped Pyre and so on and Call of the Brotherhood, I know that people say like, hey, wait a second, that item costs more than um, the amount that I farmed in the whole league, right? But in the end, you know, when leagues goes on, you get more, you farm more, you get more currency and then you'll be able to play builds like that. And this is just making all the fun out of the way, to be honest, right? Like, if we're honest, like, GGG has to remove this item like I'm doing it right now, because this item is just fucking overpowered. Get rid of me. Uh, get get rid of the item. It's just, like, stupid. So, yeah, I was just a small showcase. So, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. And see you in the next video.